Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the radiator on an E90 BMW, specifically a 335i. So here's the failure point on my radiator. As you can see, there's coolant everywhere. Right here where the radiator hose clicks into place, you can see that it's leaking. With heat, it expands and gets even worse. So it's basically the plastic that cracked over time. So as usual, I'm gonna to try to minimize the amount of work that's required here. I'm gonna avoid pulling the intercooler from below. Let's see how much we can get done from just the top. We're gonna to remove this uh, air duct, two T20s. This fan shroud is gonna to have to come out of the way, so I'm disconnecting the electrical connector for it. Just tuck that out of the way. I've had to replace this with time because it did fail, but normally your stock rad holes would just click in right here, but this has been working fine for a long time. So that can kind of just stay out of your way for now. Over here in the corner of your fan shroud, there's a T25 that needs to come out. Right here. Right here at the coolant bottle, I'm gonna remove this hose right here. Just lift up on the clip. It's already lost coolant, so there's not much in there. Nothing should come out. So now looking at the rad hose over here, this upper piece right here. So be careful how much you turn this. Don't allow it to rotate too much because you could actually snap this if it's brittle. Really, it's a sign that it's failing, but just keep that in mind. Uh, I have a newer upper radiator hose, or at least it's a couple of years old, so um, I'm in okay shape here, but that could let go if you put too much force on it. Now if you pay attention right here, you'll see that the fan shroud actually clicks into the side of the radiator right here. So we're gonna have to kind of pull this tab out of the way and lift up on the fan shroud. So you'll see me doing that. It's right below the upper rad hose. All right, so this car is automatic. So I won't be able to remove that fan shroud unless I go underneath the car, remove the splash shield and undo one screw which holds the automatic transmission cooler to the fan shroud. So I'll get the car raised up now. So I have my under tray just hanging at this point. All I did was remove the bolts up at the front and the, the few up at the side. I have the back still connected because it gives me just enough access to bend it down and get to the bolt I need to get to, which I'll show you. But if you look right here, there's a T25. So this T25 right here would have restricted us from being able to pull up on the fan shroud. You can see that frees the transmission cooler up. There's one intercooler piece of piping that is snapped into the fan shroud. If you look right there, you gotta get a screwdriver, wedge it in there to be able to pry this off of there before you can pull up. Just as an FYI, I'm gonna do that now. All right guys, just be prepared for that to fight you the whole way up. It's kind of typical, I have aftermarket inlets, so it kind of binds up against everything. Now rather than dropping the intercooler, I'm gonna try disconnecting the lower rad hose to drain it, as well as the upper rad hose after that has drained, and see if you can just get it out from the top without messing with the intercooler from down below. You just have to undo the clip on the radiator hose, expect a lot to come out. The upper hose, In the corners, there's two T25 Torx holding the radiator and AC condenser together. There's a rubber strip at the top of the radiator. You might as well remove that now. Now, if you look right here, there's your transmission cooler. There's a screw on the front of it that you have to remove. So right there as well, there's a Torx screw. We gotta remove that. It'd be a little hard to make out, but what I did for this side, is I unplugged this coolant line from the radiator off the transmission cooler. I just undid the clip. That made it possible to get that out without unscrewing over on that side. Now I'm gonna go over after this side. 
On this side, the line goes somewhere over here, so it's too hard to, to get to the clip. So I'll try to raise up on the rad in such a way that I can unscrew that hose easily. All right, so at that angle, I was able to get that side out. I just kind of kept it like this. Got that one screw out, pulled the hose out. Admittedly, that wasn't the most elegant looking removal of the radiator. I had to tug quite hard over there, but really it's just the plastic body getting caught up with some metal lines over there and some heavy duty plastic. So you're not harming anything by yanking over on that side. And it saved me from pulling out any intercooler piping. So here's a new radiator. I'm going to assemble the line on here in advance. So you gotta start with that side. I tried angling like this and getting that hose on, wasn't able to get that on after. So force the driver's side down and then follow up with the passenger side and then put that hose on from underneath and then continue to slide down. So my bad actually, I could have saved a whole bunch of time here, but this piece here, this fitting can be screwed on off the car and that hose just clicks into place so you can remove it easily from the car, save you some time. So. The opposite side doesn't, but this side does. So just attach that to the new radiator and just remove the hose from here when you're removing the old radiator off the car. Start by putting the driver's side in and getting it in this little groove. All right guys, this is the following day. I wasn't feeling it yesterday. It was kind of under the weather and rather than push myself to get this done, while not feeling very good and screwing things up, I decided to just follow up the next day. So that screw right there was giving me a hard time. Wasn't able to pull everything into position. After a good night's rest, and rather than fighting it any further, I just lowered my intercooler down, lowered the screws so that I'd have better clearance down near the bottom. What happened with my intercooler is just, I guess, as I've hit a couple bumps here and there, kind of bent things. So the intercooler was pushing up further than it ever really should and causing some friction with trying to get the radiator put into position. Another thing I did was remove this. As you can see, it just clicks into place. That kind of holds things, but if you don't remove that and don't drop your intercooler down a little bit, you may have a hard time trying to squeeze everything into position. So keep that in mind. In retrospect, it's nice not needing to be able to move the intercooler, depending if you have an aftermarket one or stock one, but really it's going to make things easier. Instead of fighting around hoses and whatnot, you're probably better off removing the intercooler or lowering it down at least. Just keep that in mind. I ended up leaving the lines on and whatnot, but doing this again, I'd probably just remove the intercooler. At the bottom of the radiator, I'm going to reinstall the seal. Another thing I opted to do was remove these just to get things to move around a little bit easier to help with lining up the rad. There are T50. That's what holds everything stiff. All right, so at the bottom of the radiator, I have my rubber seal back in place and I'm gonna push up the intercooler now to press up against this now that everything is securely mounted. So I reinstalled this rubber seal. I've put on the coolant lines. All right, just clicked in the trainee cooler line over on the driver's side. It's hard to show you guys on cam, but basically just push down on that, snap that in place. I'm gonna bring the fan shroud back into position before I put the upper rat hose in. I'm gonna go ahead underneath the car and put the screw back on for the automatic transmission cooler and close up that cover. I'll come back when I'm ready to mix my coolant and fill this system. And I'll show you how to do the bleed procedure. All right, I'm gonna get the car down off jack stands and we'll start filling. Very right, time to start filling. This is concentrated, so I just dumped half the bottle in and then half the bottle of distilled and then I mixed the last of it in this bottle, filled it back up. With the battery charger connected, I'm gonna go in the car and initiate the bleed procedure. I'll show you how to do that. 
put the key in the on position. Fan in the lowest setting. Put the temperature all the way up to 84 and just floor the throttle. 10 seconds. And you'll hear the pump go. That initiated the electronic bleed procedure, which activates the water pump. So eventually we'll see that drop down and we'll see a steady stream of fluid coming out from here, we know even that we've pretty much bled it. You can just make it out the steady stream that's to the right of that little peg there. You'll see a stream of water when the pump initiates. You see it right there. It's nearly done because we're hardly getting any air bubbles anymore. So I'll come back once it's finished. All right guys, ready to conclude. I probably made pulling the fan shroud out look a lot harder than it really is. Um, it's because of my aftermarket intercooler and the fact that it's kind of pushed up a little bit and actually out that way. So trying to pull it up, I was fighting the resistance of the intercooler. Same with putting it back into place. It's normally not this difficult to pull it out. That, that's probably the most time consuming part for you guys getting this out. And also putting in the radiator, make sure you put the driver's side in first, slide it down the plastic channel, and then focus on this side over here. That's important. And then I was kind of dumb of me. I wasn't thinking, I was actually a little under the weather when I was starting this, so wasn't thinking straight, but the line over here, the transmission cooler line just clicks in and you can remove it. You only have to unscrew that side and then you can unclip that from the transmission cooler and get this out a lot quicker. I'm gonna call this a two and a half to three hour job. And um, it's a little annoying. If it looks seamless and easy in this video, it's not that easy because you're fighting tight spaces. And you gotta make sure you guide everything in perfectly. Otherwise you get snagged up on something, you gotta pull it back out and reposition. So keep that in mind. I don't have any leaks, I'm in good shape. I'm gonna start the car, let it warm up, make sure I'm good. But there's one point I wanna make to you guys. You can avoid bending any of the fins on your new radiator. This is just a cheapy radiator, but you can avoid that just by making sure you guide things in perfectly. I straightened up some fins. I don't really care because, you know, this is now my kind of a beater car. You know, I respect this car. It's awesome. There's gonna be lots of content to come on it, but it's my beater car now and I'm not gonna go nuts on it with perfection. All right, so here's my old radiator, but that's where the transmission cooler line would go. And the line just slides in there and then you bolt down the side of it. But there's an O-ring in here. If you can get your hands on that O-ring, an OEM O-ring to replace that before you put everything back together. Well, even if you get a minor leak when you first start the car up with a couple heat cycles, it'll probably situate itself. But had I known in advance, I would have bought that O-ring. So far, I'm in good shape though. I'm gonna start the car up, let it run for a while, make sure it's leak free. All right guys, leak free, everything is good to go. So this shows you how to replace your radiator on your E90 BMW, specifically an automatic 335i with the N54 motor. If this is the first video you're catching on mine, consider subscribing. I do upload regularly. Thanks for watching.